Howdy y'all, Dean Stilly here from the official home of unofficial Grateful Dead and Music News reporting on Dead & Company as the final tour summer 2023 here. The bands in Deer Creek is uh, following up four strong shows uh, we had in New York and Boston. So uh, here we go, we're in Deer Creek, a place that uh, the community has loved to visit over the years. I've been going, I, my first Deer Creek show summer of 89, place was brand new. So nothing out there but farms at the time. There wasn't much out there. The neighbors were kind of friendly. They uh, were selling the camping spots and stuff like that on their property. And it's, there wasn't too much to fuck up out there because there wasn't much out there. So, uh, so it was typically a good time. Uh, we had a blast and the show has always seemed to be very good out there. Uh, it's been there a number of times throughout the year. So we're excited to get Deer Creek underway. So uh, this thing gets started and, and we open it up with Bertha. It's a Bertha. That's going to be a good time. Everyone's going to jam out on that. I noticed that uh, Weir, he's, he's once again taking my 11 year old sweatpants out of his hamper and throwing them on for the show and so he's out there uh, getting his thing on for some reason he takes the second verse of Bertha I'm not sure why so nobody needs him singing any verses in Bertha uh, so they, they got to the third verse uh, John hit they didn't know who the hell was supposed to take that so they just kind of whiffed on it as I got back to it uh, John ended up taking it so I say share the women Share the wine, don't share verses in Bertha. Uh, that's my two cents on that, but well, it doesn't matter what I have to say, really. It's, this is just a conversation starter, so uh, then we can begin to converse about things. So, there you go. I said in the last review, Weir, he was a little hoarse. <laughs> Uh, so I got props now. Uh, seems like he's a quick recovery for, for Weir. They go into good love, and then Weir seems like he, he's recovered pretty quickly. Uh, they came stumbling into good love and, and got that underway. By, by they got a little bit of a, a limp as that thing started, but as it moved along, it started gaining steam. As Weir was strong on the end of that. The end of that, boy, we were turning back the clock. Quick recovery on Weir's voice. He was killing it. We were getting... Uh, falsetto and he, he was hitting the big notes that was a great time had by Weir to end that up so uh, we are in fine form at the end of good love and we all love to see that it must have been the roses uh, was next I'm sure that most of you liked uh, mayor on that much better than I did so that's all I'll say about that it was a fine job everyone's happy to hear that song get played so we have Big River next, and Big River, listen, the pace here is good. Uh, uh, the song's moving along properly. Uh, I thought it was good. So th they go nuts on Till I Dies. We got 100 Till I Dies at, at the end of that. It's kind of like the My Honey's in the Dew, and uh, it never stop, never stop, never stop, never stop. I, I don't know, so we've become crazy about uh, repetitive shit, it seems, in Dead & Company. So as uh, Till I Die, we get an awful lot of Till I Dies. Uh, so then they play Dark River or something. They 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 start uh, we start singing the verses of Dark Star uh, over Big River and, and they keep going with it. And uh, I don't know. I'm sure somebody thought that was a good idea. It's, uh, probably it wasn't me. You know who's good at that shit? J-Rad, J-Rad, if you want mashups, they know how to properly take care of the mashups and uh, nobody better in the business. Uh, at that than J-Rad. So a anyway, this is Dead & Company. Uh, so we get uh, Dark River. We get uh, d uh, basically Big River music with Dark Star lyrics over it. That's fun, man. Listen, if you're trying to have fun, I think that's fun. So a uh, way to try to have fun and mix things up, I think that's just fine. Next time you see me is next. So next time you see me, it's funny. Uh, Mayor gets it started. He turns towards Jay Lane. Jay refuses to look him in the eyes. For fear of falling in love. Uh, it's, it's not easy to do if you look Mayor right in the eyes. There's a chance you may fall in love. Uh, so, so, anyway, that was just fine. They, they drive right into half step. Uh, it's, it's as smooth as musical bumper cars, the way they uh, move it into the half step. Uh, half step's just fine. They do a good job. So, so my son walks in during the second verse of the half step. He said, Dad, why is Weir singing like he's dying? I said, <laughs> I don't know, buddy. So just keep listening. He'll come back to life, I'm sure. So so anyway, we got through that. Is that that was? I'm never gonna be crazy about 
choruses and stuff like that that are heavy on Mayer's falsetto. Uh, that to me is uh, just not from me. But uh, they do a great job with that jam. It's a fun song to hear. They show Jeff when they start going across the lazy river. He's uh, He's singing back up there as they go across the Rio Grandio and the Lazy River. I guarantee his mic's not turned on. Unless he's got a verse in a song, I guarantee you the volume on his mic's at like 0.5. It's no higher than one or two, no doubt. So anyway, right from that, pretty smooth, they move the thing right into Birdsong. Birdsong has got some good, the jams in that one had some great breathing room. I mean, uh, there was empty spaces where, you know, empty spaces are meant to be, and then it got busy when it was time to get busy. So uh, they gave it the business when it was time to get busy. That's fun. That's a fine mix of musical textures happened throughout that one. That was a, a great time. Close the set with Don't Ease. So there you go. That's a, that's a fine first set. That's a fun way to spend the first half of the night. So we're all excited uh, now thinking uh, they're probably just going to scorch it here. They're going to come out with a roaster for the second set. They open it up with Ico. It, it, one of those tunes when they're starting, it's uh, since the beginning of time, you're like, oh, it's women are smarter. It, it's Ico. You don't know what the heck. There, there, there's a couple of them that sound pretty similar when you're getting it started. It's not women are smarter. It's uh, it's Ico. So here we go with Ico. Ico, I love it. Ico might have more verses than any song in history. Sometimes I think Weir's just freestyling on that, and the possibilities are endless. There's a ton of verses. I don't know if you ever get the same ones twice, which is interesting, as sooner or later he gets to looking through this woman's suitcase or closet, and he's picking out the colors of her dresses, and we're singing along. Everyone's going to be happy, because it goes a happy song. Uh, so there we go. Out of that, we're going to get Sugary. Sugary's always going to be a good one on these guys. I, 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 it's funny, I was listening earlier in the day, I got a YouTube notice about a remastered uh, September 18th, 87 uh, that was uh, on YouTube, and I was listening to it, and I was uh, listening to that uh, Bucket Sugary from that night, and that, that was special. So it's uh, tough sometimes when you have a really recent thing to kind of put it up against it can be different on your ears but i thought they did a great job on sugary regardless and uh, so then you're going to get the china rider so uh, that's a fine way to uh, get your second set so i know people they'll bitch about things being repeated and stuff the dead repeat we've got a lot of china riders during tours and stuff like that i never got tired of them uh, as i could take a china rider damn near every night i'm gonna have just as much fun uh, the tenth night as I did the first. It's just a jam that I love. It goes <clears throat> a ton of different places. It's uh, it, I love it. So I'm never going to complain about China Riders. I always love hearing them. Jeff, absolutely killing it on that. Jeff is so consistent musically. I mean, he just really drives so much of what happens with this band, the direction they take, and uh, so he just adds so much. We are very fortunate to have Kaminti as a part of our community. You get a uh, Uncle John's after that, and Uncle John's great, great uh, piece uh, of improv into drums. The end jam on Uncle John's is just furious. O'Teal absolutely killing it. Uh, that's something worth listening to again. The end of that jam was extremely interesting. They drove that one hard into drums. And so then we get drums in space. We get Hell in a Bucket out of space. That's a good change. Don't hear that much. So Hell in a Bucket out of space. I thought that was just fine coming out of space. Always love Weir uh, embellishing that one at the end. We all want to know about Rod. We all want that. We, we all love Weir when he's hitting the big notes. Uh, there's room for one guy's falsetto in this band. That's weird. Remember that. Uh, so Warf Rat's up next. So here for me is where uh, the show runs out of gas. Uh, uh, we get into Warf Rat, another tune that uh, just for whatever. I'm just not gonna like this song on this band. I'm uh, just not. I think the uh, the harmonies were better than they usually are. Not so much. Uh, horrendous falsetto by Mayer on him. Uh, so he was kind of singing it a little straighter and I thought they were better than usual, but I, so I, that's just one of those songs for me that so I'm probably never going to be crazy about coming from this band, but it's okay. It's a popular one. The people love it, so it doesn't matter if I do or not. Uh, the people love it. It's, uh, listen, it's, I love Brajut, and if Weir didn't like Brajut, I wouldn't stop eating Brajut. 
I, I, that's all there is to it. So it, it's as simple as that. Uh, Love Light closes the show, and Love Light is fantastic. That's always been a great way to close a show. I thought Weir was outstanding on that, and uh, I love Love Light closing it. Uh, we get uh, Touch for the encore. Touch played like we're two hours past everybody's bedtime. The, it seemed like they ran out of gas on the Love Light. The Touch uh, was sluggish. Seemed like they were all uh, up way past their bedtime and trying to get this one out and close the show. So you close it with the touch. Uh, there you go. There's Deer Creek. It's just a conversation started. So let the discussions commence. One of the uh, great pastimes of Deadheads is in between the music. We talk about the music. So uh, here we go. This is just a format to do so. It's, uh, we welcome your comments. It's funny, my kids, they're always on YouTube, right? And everybody, all the people they watch, all start out their videos with saying, hey, hit like and subscribe and touch the bell and get notifications. So I've never said that. So maybe I should. Is that the way to, that you become something or something? I don't know. I don't think I care. It's a, this is just a hobby. Anyway, let the conversations commence. I love you long time. I, I think I might be able to cover some of this weekend because it's, uh, it's uh, Boulder hitting us on the weekend, so I might be able to cover some of it. Might start reviewing the first set after it's done, doing that during intermission, and uh, so maybe get to the second set when I can. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes, but I, I love you all a long time and forever, and we'll talk to you uh, somewhere in time throughout Boulder. All right? See you soon.